Hello everybody and welcome back to the free online woodworking school where we aim to take your woodworking skills to the next level. In today's video, we're gonna get the shelf sized and fitted within the carcass of the cabinet. Let's get going. Right, so in the very first part of this series, we edge jointed the side panels of the cabinet and in doing so, we also edge jointed the shelf together. So this is already sorted. The only thing that I need to do now is cut it to size. So I've already got the face side and the face edge mark on here from when I originally jointed them, but I could change my mind if I wanted but there's that horrible light patch there. There is a little bit of tear out towards the back of the panel here, which I don't really like, but by the time we cut it to size, we should remove all of that section anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. I'm gonna stick with what I've got. So sizing this panel is gonna be done in exactly the same way as we did for the sides of the cabinet. Remember that you're always referencing this face edge up against the shooting board, and we'll get both ends perfectly square and parallel to one another, and then we'll trim this final edge down to size. The only thing I would like to remind you at this point is, we're gonna be cutting a tongue on the end of this to fit within the groove of the carcass. And effectively, that is a type of tenon. And a common problem that people have when they're sizing material that's due to be tenoned into something else is that they cut the piece to the distance between the shoulders without taking into account the added length they need for the tenons. So in the example of this cabinet, remember, it seems really obvious, but some people will do it. You're not cutting it from here to here, you're cutting it from the bottom of that mortise to the bottom of the other mortise. So make sure you take that measurement and not the measurement from the inside walls. Okay, so I can see that the shelf just about fits within that groove. Got a tiny bit of side to side movement, but it doesn't matter at all because that gap will be at the end of the tongue and can actually be beneficial in some ways. You'll see it in a minute. So next I've got to size the panel front to back because we've only established the width so far. And we're gonna start this measurement from the inside of the rebate, but we're actually gonna add a millimeter onto it. It'll just give us a little bit more flexibility when it comes to locating the shelf in the groove when we're gluing up and means that we can plane a bit of excess off the front after assembly. Now I stupidly threw away the panel gauge that I made in the first part of this series, which would have been ideal to scribe this parallel line. But seeing as we're making it oversized, I could probably just get away with doing it with a knife. So we're marking it one millimeter oversized there, and I'm gonna do exactly the same down this side, and then join them up. And then back on the shooting board to plane back to that line that I scribed in with the knife. Remember in the first part, we did this with the long grain shooting board. That was kind of one that I quickly knocked together for the sake of a demonstration, but you can use a normal shooting board as a long grain shooting board, providing it's long enough, which in this case it is. But I would like to stress that I'm not relying on that edge giving me a true square edge. Obviously because it's a shooting board, it should do, but because I'm not referencing off my face edge, I don't want to be 100% reliant on that. So as I'm planing, I will be making small adjustments to this board to ensure that I hit that line all in one go. You can also get little shavings and stuff and stuff it behind the piece in order to slightly angle it if you want. Doesn't really matter what method you choose, just make sure to get back to that line evenly. All right, so I'm like a whisper away from the line there, but I am getting a tiny bit of tear out and that's because I'm going against the grain. So I'm gonna flip it over and just do the final few going with the grain. Right, so the shelf has been correctly sized and if I put that in there and line it up with the bottom of the rebate, there is about a millimeter sticking proud of the front of the cabinet. So after assembly, we'll just plane that off flush. By planing this down flush after assembly, it just prevents any worries about misalignment while gluing this in. So the next job is to start scribing the shoulder lines around both ends of this shelf in order to make the tongue. Now don't go ahead and just set your marking gauge to the dimension that's listed on the working drawings because it may end up making your shoulder lines too long or too short. Because if you think about it, the shoulder lines on the shelf need to be exactly the same as the shoulder lines on the dovetails. 
If they're a bit too long, then the sides of this cabinet are going to have to bow out around the shelf and then bow back in in order to meet the shoulder lines on the dovetails at the bottom. And if the shoulder lines are too far in, then the cabinet is obviously going to have to curve in in order to close up the shoulder lines on the shelf. So by blindly setting your marking gauge to that setting and then just going ahead and cutting everything out, you greatly increase your chances of that happening. What we can do is instead set the gauge to the desired dimension, in this case, eight millimeters, because that's how deep we cut the groove. And we're just gonna scratch it on the back of the shelf as a tester. Don't wanna scratch it on the front in case it's wrong. There you go, we've got two little marks there. We're just gonna line them up with the shoulder lines on the dovetails, and it seems like I have been lucky. Or I was super cautious when sizing the material, I don't know, but you can see the line that I scratched on the top there, and that lines up directly with the dovetail. And then if we go along this way, once again, you can see that line and it's lining up exactly with the shoulder line below. So be sure to check that those shoulder lines align with the shoulder lines on the dovetails before cutting anything out because you really don't want the cabinet bowing out or anything like that. And what's worth mentioning is this cabinet because it's a solid material, it may actually be bowing out or bowing in already. In addition to that, some of these dovetails haven't properly bottomed out and won't do until I just give them a little nip up with the clamps. So if I'm scribing these shoulder lines on here and then testing it somewhere inside the cabinet carcass, that alignment may be inaccurate because those sides might be splaying out, they might be bowing out, they might be bowing in, and it's not gonna give you a true reading of the distance between the shoulder lines. Whereas the distance between the shoulder line on the dovetails, those are the only parts of the cabinet that can be a fixed datum surface for the shoulder lines on the shelf and is why we've referenced off them. So this setting is going to be scratched around all four faces of both sides. So the shoulder lines have been marked out and the next thing to sort out is the height thickness of the tongue which is going to be 10 millimeters according to the width of the groove that we've cut into the cabinet. So we want a 10 millimeter tongue and we're working on a 15 millimeter thick component. So I've set this marking gauge to 2.5 millimeters, therefore taking five millimeters off the overall thickness and giving us a 10 millimeter tongue right in the center. And I'm also gonna continue those scribe lines down the front to meet up with the shoulder line that we gauged on before. So in order to cut out these rebates, I'm gonna be using a rebate plane. Unfortunately, this one has lost the nicker at the front, which is used to score the grain before cutting. So I've made it a really deep marking gauge line there instead. The only trouble you have when doing rebates across the grain is when you go across like this and then you plane off the front, I'm not gonna to push too hard, you may risk some breakout on that front edge, even on this side of the shoulder line. So we are going to clamp a sacrificial piece of timber that's the same thickness, and ideally not so wobbly, because I've got some glue there. Get out of here, there we go. So we're gonna clamp a piece of timber that's the same thickness on the back edge of this shelf that we're working on so that we can't get any breakout. So after a bit of fiddling, I think I've got the blade lined up with that shoulder line. We're just gonna keep working this down until we hit that line. Remember, keep that plane locked into your side and let your legs do the movement. So we've got a pretty good fit when it comes to the back of the shelf, but there's obviously a little taper of some kind on the tongue itself because it's seizing up when it gets that deep. So I've got a shoulder plane here and we're gonna use that to trim down the rest of the tongue. Right, so you can see we've got a few small gaps along the edge of the shelf, which is completely predictable. That's because we haven't closed up the gaps on the dovetails just yet. You can see on all of these, they just need a little press end to end in order to close them up. And in doing so, that will close up everything that's happening down here as well. So obviously at the moment, the shelf isn't getting to the front of the cabinet because we cut a stopped groove, as you can see there. So we need to cut a little notch out the end of the tongue in order to allow this to become flush or just slightly overstep the front. 
So to do that from the front edge of the cabinet, I'm gonna set a marking gauge to the end of the groove plus one millimeter or at least thereabouts. And this will allow the shelf to come out beyond the front of the cabinet so we can plane it flush afterwards. So we've got the face side on the front of our shelf. And with that marking gauge setting, we're gonna scribe over the top of the tongue on the front edge of the shelf. And then we'll get those in the vise and just cut out that little notch on the front edge. So coming in from the top, I'm gonna to cut like directly to the line, but obviously cutting on the waist side, exactly as I would with a dovetail. down to the shoulder line and then flip it around and here I'm going to leave about half a millimetre to chisel back to and a sharp chisel will go into that line and we'll just tap it down vertical. And then just a little bit of clean up if required. And after finishing both of them off, this should... Yes. So you can see we're sitting proud of the front edge, which is good, so we can plane it down later. And the back edge is nice and flush, so when the back panel goes in there, we won't get any gap at the back of the shelf or anything either. Right, and there you go, guys. That is how you rebate and fit the shelf for the traditional cabinet. Obviously, if you have a router table, you're gonna be laughing at this stage, just set up a rebate cutter or even the same cutter that you use to do the grooves in the side of the cabinet and just set it up to rebate that way. I would still urge you to do those marking gauge lines so you can work back to them by shifting the fence back and raising the cutter and all that. But overall, I am very happy with that. So in the next episodes, we're gonna be sanding and pre-finishing the inside faces of these. And then the one after that, we're actually gonna get it glued together. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching. If you found the video useful, don't forget to press the like button below and subscribe by pressing the big round button to the left-hand side of the video. You can move on to the next lesson by pressing the button below. We'll see you in the next one.